At precisely 8.53 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on July 4, 2016, Happy Independence Day, NASA piloted the Juno spacecraft into Jupiter's orbit after traveling 1.7 billion miles over the last five years. And boy, are its arms tired. Hi there, Jules here for DNews, and we have an awesome update for you. There's now a spacecraft orbiting Jupiter. Juno was launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station by an Atlas V rocket on August 5, 2011, and sent on its way to answer one very basic question. How did Jupiter form? This question holds a lot of promise, and its answer could even help explain the finer details about how the Earth came to be and how life took hold. But more on that later. So we wanted to get Juno to Jupiter, but at the time of launch, no rocket ship had nearly enough force to send anything 365 million miles, which is the shortest possible distance between the Earth and Jupiter. To solve this problem, instead of using a super powerful rocket that we didn't have, mission scientists at NASA used, well, the Earth. Two years after it was launched, Juno came back to Earth on an elongated orbit around the Sun. When it came within reach of our planet again, the spacecraft used Earth's gravity to carry out a gravitational slingshot maneuver. Yeah, the Earth literally slingshotted Juno towards Jupiter and gave it a speed boost of more than 8,800 miles per hour. And it's been picking up speed. Over the last few weeks, Juno has hit 165,000 miles per hour relative to Earth, making it the single fastest man-made object ever. To be fair though, that's kind of cheating, because all that speed is thanks to Jupiter's overwhelming gravitational pull, which is about two and a half times Earth's gravity. But with great speed comes great responsibility. Going that fast is nice, right up until you have to slow down. At that speed, Juno would have completely missed Jupiter, and that would have been a huge bummer and a giant waste of money. So to get it down to orbital speed, there needed to be a super powerful rocket burn to slow the spacecraft down. Fortunately, the orbital burn went perfectly, and Juno is now in its new, highly radioactive home. Emphasis on highly radioactive. Jupiter's orbit is one of the harshest places a spacecraft can be in the entire solar system. On Earth, we're exposed to roughly one-third of a rad of radiation. Over the course of Juno's primary mission of 20 months, the craft will be exposed to 20 million rad. And while that number probably won't turn Juno into a member of the Fantastic Four, it does create a serious hazard for the sensitive onboard electronics. To be honest, there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of things that can go very, very wrong. No mission has ever come this close to study the gas giant. The 1997 Galileo spacecraft was the first to orbit Jupiter, but Juno will get to monitor it even closer, coming within 3,100 miles of the planet's cloud tops during its 14-day orbit. But even though it's already there, Juno's mission will officially start in October 2016, when it'll give Jupiter a full diagnostic to figure out what's going on beneath those toxic space clouds. It'll study Jupiter's magnetic and gravitational fields to understand how the gas giant generates its hugely powerful magnetosphere and to understand what the planet's core is made of, because honestly, we have pretty much no idea. Juno will also set out to examine the distribution of water in the atmosphere, in the hope of perhaps piecing together the role water may have played in the formation of Jupiter. And that's the core of Juno's exploration, to reveal how Jupiter, and by extension, other planets like Earth, formed. By studying Jupiter's atmosphere, we can gain more clues about how life could have flourished early in the solar system's history. Juno could give us an unprecedented look at the past, and might finally solve some of the universe's greatest mysteries. Juno isn't the only recent space news. We also found gravitational waves, again, if that sounds confusing, check out Ian's video. Gravitational waves are basically ripples through space-time, traveling at the speed of light. If you imagine ripples traveling across the surface of a pond after dropping a pebble into the water, you have a pretty good two-dimensional view about what's going on. What are you most excited for Juno to discover? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to DNews.